Hi everybody, I'm back. I would like to lead you through the final portion of project three. It's part four, that's what's due on Friday. And in doing so, I'd also like to help you understand how you could possibly finally use AI in this class for this project. So let's take a look. Project three, task four. Some of these questions, you're going to be answering five questions on Project 3, Task 4, and some of them will look familiar. You will have already completed them. So I'm just going to quickly go through my example so you could see how I would answer these questions. And then we'll talk about the element of this um, project where I think you could really successfully use AI if you'd like to. All right, so you have five questions to answer. Of course, I'm going to first ask you to uh, write down what it is about academic writing that you are problematizing. In this example, I put um, the use of rubrics for grading. Here's why I did that. I think many of us just assume, take for granted the fact that um, you need a rubric to be graded for your writing. My guess is you've come across a lot of rubrics in the past, um, either in college or in high school. Uh, they seem to be everywhere. So uh, just to make sure that that really is the case, I'm asking you to provide two examples of this practice that you are challenging or problematizing. So on my version, if you clicked on this link, it would lead you to two rubrics that are used in college writing classes. However, as you might know, that wouldn't be necessary. All, all I would really have to do is point you to rubrics that we've used for this class because I've got rubrics all over the place in this class. All right, so you have wrote down what it is you're problematizing. You will have provided examples to, to show that, yes, this still is a practice in um, writing for the, for the academy. Then I'm going to ask you to ask one question at least about this practice and then try to answer it. So some of my questions you might want to pay attention to because they are very similar to questions you could use as well. All right. One thing that we can always ask when we're problematizing is why. Why do instructors so often use rubrics for grading writing? Um, then another kind of question you can ask is who does this practice benefit? Who benefits from a rubric? Who does a rubric help? You can also ask, and I encourage you to do so, a question that will problematize this practice. Who does it harm? I think that, oh, wait, so, sorry. So um, those questions, questions about why, who benefits and who is harmed are questions you can always use for problematizing. It helps us make a familiar practice strange. It helps us see it in a new light. Okay. So then of course I ask you to answer your question. Um, one of them, at least here's how I answered. I think that rubrics benefit instructors, allowing them to quote unquote grade an assignment easily and quickly rubrics allow them to provide a grade, but they might also allow instructors to avoid engaging with a work and instead just check items off of a type of list. I also think that rubrics help beginning students and or those concerned with following quote unquote the rules. But I also think that rubrics might harm students who want to write or express themselves in non-traditional ways. Okay, so those are the kinds of questions I asked to problematize in this case, the practice of using rubrics to grade writing. Next comes the fun part and the part that I think you'll be able to successfully use AI for if you'd like. So. I'm asking you to create a text that does the problematizing. Uh, most of the time for this class, when I'm asking you to create something, you're using words to do it. You don't necessarily have to use written words in this part of your project. So you could do anything. You could write a short essay, let's say about one page. You could write a poem. You could create an infographic or a PowerPoint, or you could make a screencast like I'm using right now, Maybe you'll make a TED talk. Maybe you'll use a genre that I haven't even considered. Um, so this is where I think using AI could come in really handy. Uh, let me show you, I'm gonna scroll real quick to where you can find an example of student work that doesn't use only the written word. If you go up to 
our course projects and schedule module at the top of our page you, and then you scroll down to project three uh, you're going to see that I've posted some student samples for you. The one that I think you'd uh, be interested in looking at that's a bit different from examples that we've seen so far is this one um, with the stunningly original name of Project 3 Student Sample. Now, I can't play this whole thing for you uh, in the screencast because you won't be able to hear it, but um, take a look because um, when you do, you'll find a student, Kaylin, who has created something for this project that isn't just using the written word. As you can even see from this thumbnail, she is going to use video. That's her in the corner talking about her project, and she's going to use visuals as well. So check. I encourage you to check that out. Again, it's under Project 3. <laughs> Let's look again. Project three student sample. All right, now here's the thing. Let's say you want to create uh, a text for project three task four. I'm gonna scroll down and open it up again. Uh, that maybe is something different than you're used to. If you'd like, you can use AI for that. I'm just gonna pop into an app that I found just this morning um, that maybe you'd wanna use. Let's open this up. Uh, when I was scrolling, uh, when I was Googling uh, what AI programs are free, <laughs> um, I came across this one. It's called VideoGen. And here up in the corner, you can see the um, URL for that. So this application helps you generate a video if you like. Remember, uh, so you can check that out. If you want to use it, that's great. Uh, oops, sorry. Remember that um, you, you can use any kind of AI for this, any kind of chatbot, if you want specifically for um, your answer to number four, creating a text that does the quote unquote problematizing. But here's what I want you to remember, two things. Actually, <laughs> one's kind of important. Please make it short enough so that any reader could experience it in five minutes or less. Um, when you're using AI, you can generate a lot of stuff. Uh, but I don't have time to, to um, watch or listen to so much stuff that you can create. So make whatever it is you're going to make, but try to get it in um, within under five minutes of the reader or viewer being able to experience it. And finally, I just want to point out something very important. You're not done once you've created a text that quote unquote does the problematizing. This is key. I would also like you to include a brief statement on how you will adhere to, <clears throat> follow, or continue to use this academic writing convention or practice, how you might challenge that practice, or, and this is really neat, evolve the genre or convention you've analyzed and problematized. We want there to be a purpose for our problematizing. What comes out of this process? Let us know. Uh, okay, that's it. If you have any questions, of course, please let me know. And I'm really, really looking forward to seeing what you create. Thanks.